Well, I think you kind of touched on something I wanted to bring up with you. Um, we're friends on social media um, and I follow you and um, you're very open and, um, you know, about your journey and everything. And I think it was fairly recently you put up a, a reel about the relationship economy and you've already kind of explained it a little bit, but do you want to go into that a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. what you mean by mm -hmm. a relationship economy and do people... Do a lot of musicians sort of realize realize that that we are in that relationship economy? I think I think people realize it, you know, subconsciously somehow. One thing that really helped me a lot was this, and and this doesn't just apply to musicians and the industry. I mean, we'll talk about we can talk about it in that context, but I think this kind of applies quite broadly. So I'm a great believer that the quality of our life is dependent a lot on the quality of relationships that you're in and your ability to be able to create these relationships and foster them and nurture them and look after them. You know? And as I've said many times before, we are in a relationship economy and the currency of the economy is trust and trust is something that you earn. Now, how do you earn trust? It comes from you being engage with people by being someone who's there to provide something, not just take something, because most of the time people go into situations or friendships, relationships, looking at, well, how can I leverage something? How can I get something? How can I use this particular situation rather than what can I bring? Yeah. What can I offer? What problems can I solve? How can I actually contribute? Because it's when you come from that perspective and that attitude that you're going to earn trust. And again, just put yourself in the shoes of the other person. It, someone comes to you, and most of us can pick up on these sort of things, Craig. We can tell, we can sense when, oh, someone's here and being nice to us, for, you know, because they want something or they've heard something about us and all of a sudden now, you know, they want to pick our brains or they want to, uh, to, us to do something for them or do them a favour, whatever. I'll give you, I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll give you a real-world example, right? There was this kid who was a young engineer. He was studying at an audio school. And so obviously he was wanting to find a way to get some kind of experience or interning. But what he did, rather than ring up and just say, hey, have you got any positions or can I come in and shadow you? He was actually quite smart about it. He, he saw something online that I posted that I was having some issues with one of my, uh, one of my Macs. He hits me up and says, hey, I saw this post. I'm actually really good at computers. I can come, can I come down and help you see if I can sort out this issue for you? Didn't once even bring up anything about. So straight away, this kid had come with, a, you know, potentially with a solution to a problem that I needed fixing. So he brought value to me. He came to bring something, to contribute something. Now, in the process of doing that, guess what? He has sown the seeds of potentially creating this relationship. And so what do you know? We're sitting there. He's fixing my computer. We're talking. And... The walls are coming down from my end. I'm, I'm not. I'm realizing. Okay, this kid. Well, potentially he might be want, wanting something, but he wasn't there for that. He didn't expressly come with that, and we just started chatting about stuff. So when the time came for him to ask, it was easier for me to say, you know what, dude, you're, yeah, I'm more than willing now to at least entertain that thought. To, and but again, building that relationship, and that could go with any any particular context. So yeah. When we can become really good at building relationships with people and based on the premise that we want to be engaged with these people primarily because we want to bring something to them, then that is going to take you a hell of a lot further than approaching it from the aspect of what can I get, how can I leverage it, and have an agenda, which most people can see anyhow. So, you know, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. You can try but you're not going to get very far with it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely a relevant thing, you know, in, in any scenario, you know, large or small or no matter what sort of sector of our lives or whatever, it's uh, give and take and, you know, we've got to look after each other and help each other out and, yeah, I think now, there can... is. Sorry, no, sorry, finish yeah. what you were going to say, I'm sorry. Oh, I just, yeah, I think you can pick up on sort of who is genuine in that way and, and who is just after something from you rather than, you know, the give and take. So, hmm. 
Yeah, look, authenticity authenticity is binary and and really it's it's that authenticity um, that is going to be the ingredient to build the trust, mm. you know. You were going to go on to say something? I was, and you know what? Now I lost. I think I was <laughs> about the authenticity, but maybe no, 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 that's okay. <laughs> I, no, that, that's a, what's that? What's that? Um, what's that thing that they say, or the the, the, the meme, or the saying? Well, two types of people: those those who um, those who listen, and those who wait for their turn to speak, or something like that. All oh, right. So, yep. <laughs> yeah.